let's see about the superlateral surface. First, let's try to understand what is superlateral surface. Superlateral surface of the brain lies between the supero medial border and then inferolateral border. So this convex surface is what we refer to as superlateral surface. Right? The entire superlateral surface of the brain is divided into five lobes. Okay? The entire cerebral hemisphere is divided into six lobes. But when we see the superlateral surface, we can identify only five of these. So first, let's try to name the lobes. The cerebral hemispheres are divided into uh, six different lobes. These are frontal, occipital, parietal, temporal. Then there will be an insular lobe. And the sixth one is insula, I'm sorry, limbic lobe. Fine. Limbic lobe is often seen only from the medial aspect. Fine. But here in superlateral surface, we'll be identifying five distinct lobes. So let's try to identify this. So we have learned about the boundaries of the superlateral surface. Now let's try to identify how exactly it is divided into different uh, lobes and then what are the sulci and gyri present in each of these lobes. Before we identify these lobes, we need to identify few landmarks. Okay. Now these landmarks include three important sulci and one important notch. Once we identify this on the superlateral surface, we can identify the different lobes. Okay. So first, let's try to identify these sulci and knots. The first important sulci we need to identify as central sulcus. Okay. Now, how do we identify central sulcus? We have already identified which is the frontal pole and which is the occipital pole. The central sulcus lies one centimeter behind the midpoint of these two poles, but it should start from the medial surface. Unless it cuts the medial surface, we don't consider it as central sulcus, fine? So first, let's try to identify it. This is the medial surface of the uh, cerebral hemisphere. This is the corpus callosum. Present above the corpus callosum, we have the sulcus, right? This is referred to as callosal sulcus. Fine? Above the callosal sulcus, there is one more parallelly running sulcus. Right? This is referred to as cingulate sulcus. Now the question is, we are discussing superlateral surface, why we need to know this? If you observe, the cingulate sulcus cuts, which border is this? Superomedial, Superomedial border. Right? Once you identify this, in front of the uh, upturned end of the cingulate sulcus, you can see one sulcus here, right? Fine. This is your central sulcus. This is how you identify central sulcus. Okay? Of course, it is seen on the superlateral surface, but identify the midpoint of the frontal pole and the occipital pole. One centimeter behind it, look for a sulcus which cuts the medial surface just in front of cingulate sulcus. Fine? So let's turn it and see if this is in fact the central sulcus. Fine? So we'll see it again from here. Uh, just to understand again, this is the cingulate sulcus. In front of that, we have central sulcus. Fine? So we'll keep the superlateral surface. This is the sulcus we are talking about. Right? This is your central sulcus. Fine? Now, this is the classic appearance of central sulcus. Some of the cerebral hemispheres may not have this continuity. Right? The cerebral hemisphere, uh, sorry, the central sulcus may not cut from the medial surface to the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus. They may be present in two parts. Even that is normal. Fine? That is because the central sulcus develops in two parts, an upper part and a lower part, and then both of them get fused. So can you identify this? Central sulcus is otherwise known as sulcus of Rolando, fine, or Rolandic sulcus. Are we clear with this? Fine. The importance of knowing central sulcus is it divides your entire cerebral hemisphere into two distinct histological regions. In front of the central sulcus, we refer it to as a granular cortex. Behind the central sulcus, we refer it to as granular cortex. Okay. 
remember granular cortex is always sensory a granular cortex is predominantly motor that so this is the first landmark that we identified the next important landmark is the lateral sulcus fine to appreciate lateral sulcus okay we can do with this only better is we we'll see the whole specimen fine so let's try to understand about the lateral sulcus you can see this uh, deep sulcus right separating the orbital surface and the uh, temporal surface this is referred to as stem of the lateral sulcus uh, some of your textbook might describe it as lateral fissure both are correct okay the it is referred to as lateral fissure because of its depth it is deeper compared to other sulci right so this part is referred to as stem of the lateral sulcus right now if we trace the stem of the lateral sulcus towards the superior lateral surface it splits into three ramen since we are identifying sulci and gyri using this specimen again we'll take up this and we'll try to identify you have you've got clarity now right that is the stem of lateral sulcus or lateral fissure uh, lateral sulcus or lateral fissure is of, uh, otherwise referred to as Silvian. Very good. Silvian fissure. Okay. For example, in this specimen, this is the region of stem of the lateral sulcus. Fine. Now, stem of the lateral sulcus, as you trace it towards the superior lateral surface, at one point it splits into three branches or three ramen. These are. Can you see this? This is referred to as anterior horizontal. okay then you have anterior ascending then this is posterior ramus so the point where the stem of the lateral sulcus splits into three that is referred to as sylvian point fine right? remember your tyrion which is a landmark seen on uh, the side of the skull uh, one of the surgical importance or clinical importance of tyrion is deep to the tyrion lies sylvian point what is sylvian point the point where stem of the lateral sulcus splits into three ramen what are they anterior horizontal ascending posterior done so we have identified the two important sulcus if you trace it above can you see this this is the entire posterior ramus done so we have identified two important sulci the third important sulci that you need to identify is parieto occipital sulcus again how do you identify parieto occipital sulcus as identify the occipital pole approximately 5 cm from it you will identify a vertical sulcus cutting through the superomedial border and the superolateral surface this is your parieto occipital sulcus how do we confirm this this is covered by a u shaped gyrus this is referred to as arcus parieto occipitalis am i clear so this is the parieto occipital sulcus which separates the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe the gyrus surrounding it is referred to as arcus parieto occipitalis so we have identified we have identified three important sulci the next important landmark is not a sulci but instead it is a notch fine uh, can you tell me again what is this border inferior lateral border which is separating the inferior surface from superior lateral surface can you see a depression there that is referred to as pre occipital notch again roughly lies 5 cm from occipital pole done if you draw a line from the pre occipital notch to what is this sulcus that divides your posterior part of cerebral hemisphere or superolateral surface into a parietal lobe in front and occipital lobe behind fine these four are the important landmarks that you need to identify before uh, discussing the lobes done now let's see how exactly these help in dividing your superolateral surface into lobes fine so again let's try to identify uh, this what is this sulcus part of the brain or part of the superior lateral hemisphere that lie in front of central sulcus is frontal lobe 
Fine? Now let's try to define the boundaries of the frontal lobe. Above it is by superior medial margin. Below it is by Okay, here you can say posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus, but again here it is what border? Uh, what border is this? <laughs> Inferolateral border. Right? Posteriorly it is central sulcus. Done? So this entire thing is your frontal lobe. Done? Then you have identified a sulcus along the posterior part of superior lateral surface. What is this sulcus? Fine. As I said, from the parieto occipital sulcus, draw an imaginary line to the preoccipital notch. Fine. So whatever part lies behind this line, this is occipital lobe. Uh, this is the occipital lobe. Done? Then can I define the boundaries of the parietal lobe now? Anteriorly by central sulcus, posteriorly by a line joining the preoccipital notch and parietoccipital sulcus, below by posterior ramus of lateral sulcus, and again you need to draw an imaginary line from it to the first imaginary line. Whereas above it is by done. So these are the boundaries of parietal lobe on the superior lateral surface. Remember again, when we identify the medial surface, again we'll identify different lobes. This is identifying the lobes from the superlateral surface. Right? Then the fourth important lobe is the temporal lobe, which lies below posterior ramus of lateral sulcus and bounded below by the inferior lateral border. You already know the posterior boundary, that is imaginary line connecting the preoccipital notch and parietal occipital sulcus. Done. We have identified how many lobes? Four. Frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal. Now we need to identify the insular lobe. How do we identify the insular lobe? What you need to do is, you need to put the fingers in the sylvian point and separate it or pull it down. You can see few more gyri here, right? This one? This is the insular lobe. <coughs> Fine. Let's put it on. You can see this uh, submerged gyrus, right? This is the insular lobe. Fine. The literal meaning of insular is hidden. You cannot see it right now, right? Once we separate the rami of the lateral sulcus, this becomes visible. So this is referred to as insular lobe or hidden lobe, which is the fifth lobe. Done? Uh, is it clear about the lobes of the cerebral hemisphere now? Done? So this is regarding the five lobes. Don't worry about the limbic lobe. We'll identify it once we discuss the medial surface. 